Well, if you've got this far, you've done all the hard work on limits and the first principles differentiation. I want to go back and revisit those limits a little bit, though. My purpose is to address the problem of what happens if x happens to be in degrees and make sure that you really understand that you must use radians in the calculus. I'm going to focus on the first limit again, the one with sine x over x. I want you to understand what that's saying. The name x is not important. What it's saying is that the sine of any quantity divided by the same quantity tends to 1 as x tends to 0. Here the quantity is called x. When we did the first principles differentiation it was called h, but the answer was still the same. The name doesn't matter. I now want to look at a slightly different limit, the following one. You can see I've slipped a constant a there in front of the x in the sign, but there's no a underneath. The value of this limit will be different. Remember, to have a value 1, we require the same object on the top and the bottom. We would like to see an ax on the bottom, but it's not there. To get a handle on the value of this limit, what we do is put the ax there on the bottom, but then we remove the a outside in compensation. Something like this. a is just a constant which doesn't depend on x. So the limiting process doesn't care about the a, so long as we don't actually mess up the expression. By putting an a on the bottom, we must therefore also put another one on the top to cancel it out. But I've taken the one on the top and pulled it out through the limit, which is permissible. Now this limit is one of the form sine of something divided by the same quantity, and that quantity is tending to zero, because if x tends to zero, then so does ax. So the limit here is actually 1 again. That means the answer to the original limit must be a. There, I've written it down in a box. I want to do just one other limit. This time I'm going to do the opposite kind of thing. I'm going to put the a underneath, but not in the sign. Actually, this one is easier to deal with. All we have to do here is pull the a out to the front keeping it underneath. The value of the limit is now 1, so we get an answer 1 over a this time. Well, what does all this have to do with degrees and radians? What is a degree? We know the relation between degrees and radians. 180 degrees, that's halfway round the circle, is pi radians. The symbol for radian, by the way, do you remember that? It's a little c on the top. c there stands for the circumference of the circle. If 180 degrees is pi radians, then 1 degree is pi over 180 radians. When we're doing calculus, we often assume things are in radians, so we leave the symbol c off. Now let's look again at the limit. x goes to 0 of sine x over x. But imagine that x is now in degrees. It would look like this. Notice the degree symbol appears only inside the trig function, sine x degrees over x. But now if 1 degree is pi over 180 radians, then x degrees is x times pi over 180 radians. So we can write the limit the following way. Here, as promised, I've now left off the radian symbol. But this limit is like the one that we looked at above, sine ax over x, where a is now pi over 180. We had a means of doing that. Let's do that to the limit that we've got here. Remember how we do it? We take the a and multiply it top and bottom. So that's pi over 180 on the top, limit x to 0, sine pi over 180x divided by pi over 180x. What we have now in the limit is sine of something divided by that same something. The something is going to 0, therefore the limit is 1. 
that leaves us the result pi over 180. So if x was measured in degrees, we should have used pi over 180 for the limit of sine x degrees over x. If we neglected that fact and did the calculus assuming that the derivative of sine is cos and the derivative of cos is negative sine, then we will lose some factors of pi over 180. That's why we always keep angles in radians when we're doing calculus. Actually, if you're smart, you could see this another way too. Let's just take sine of x degrees and try and differentiate it. I'll write the x degrees now in terms of radians. So the quantity to be differentiated is really sine of pi over 180 times x. We would know how to do that so long as we know the chain rule. We differentiate the sine to get a cos and then we pull out the factor of pi over 180. Finally, if we put everything back in degrees, then inside the bracket of the cos we will now just have cos of x degrees. So we've learned another way, that when we differentiate sine of an angle in degrees, we don't just get cos, but we get cos with an extra factor, pi over 180. Working with factors like that can be very inconvenient, so that is why we always stick to radians. I hope this has been a sobering lesson for you, and I hope that you now remember never to use degrees in the calculus.